The National Employer Savings Trust, or Nest Pension as it's better known, is now 10 years old and is used by thousands of employers up and down the country to provide a workplace pension solution to millions of members. But there are some things to be aware of with Nest. Some things that may just shock you. <laughs> what I'd like to do is get a sense of how many viewers actually hold the Nest Pension as a percentage. So. Please leave a comment below to let me know if you're a member and what your general experience has been. If you do have a Nest Pension, this video is going to give you the essential knowledge you need about your plan and what you can do to give yourself the best chance of a wealthier retirement. If you're here for the first time, I'm Chris Bourne. I'm a financial planner based here in the UK and I specialise in helping people achieve and maintain financial independence tax efficiently. If that's the sort of thing you like and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and let's go. Nest was originally established as part of the Pensions Act 2008, which laid out the requirements for all employers to provide and pay into a workplace pension for their employees. It was intended to be nothing more than a backstop for employers to meet their base level obligations to staff, but it's actually become the largest workplace pension scheme by member numbers in the UK, with over 10.1 million members, holding 19.4 billion pounds of assets under management. But is it any good? Well, like with anything in life, there are pros and cons, but some things you really need to be aware of. The first is cost. Nest was set up to be a low cost arrangement and the annual management charge of 0.3% a year is low. Plus there are no setup costs. There is a 1.8% charge taken from every contribution you make though. And that is a little bit on the high side. The reason for that charge, which doesn't exist on most plans, is to repay the government loan that was made in setting up the scheme. I suppose that means that at some point in the future, the loan will have been repaid and there won't be any need for that charge. But until then, it's there. There's nothing you can do about it if your employer has chosen Nest as their workplace scheme. But if you were thinking of making more than the minimum level contributions, it's worth considering whether a separate arrangement might be a better choice. By the way guys, if you do find any of this info useful, it would really help if you could just tap that like button below. It just tells the YouTube algorithm that it's worth showing this video to other people. Nest is what's called a master trust arrangement, which is a slightly different legal structure to a group personal pension. But to all intents and purposes, most people wouldn't notice that much of a difference. From a tax relief perspective though, one of the main differences is that most group personal pensions operate on what's called a relief at source basis, where taxed income, income that you've already paid tax on, is paid into your pension scheme, and then tax relief is then added back on top of that contribution in order for you to claim that tax back. Now, most master trust arrangements operate on what's called a net pay arrangement basis, where your contributions are paid into the scheme before they've actually been taxed. That's most master trust arrangements, with the notable exception of Nest. Nest actually operates on the relief at source basis. And the reason for that is because it's much better for low income earners who earn less than the personal allowance. Those people receive their income without any tax taken from it. But when they pay that income into a pension, as a pension contribution, they still get the tax relief awarded to them. So, as an example, if they were paid £100, they'd receive £100. But when they pay that into their pension, it's topped up to £125. However, under a net pay arrangement, that £100 would just be paid directly into the scheme, and that is all they get. So, if you're a lower income earner, and you're not in Nest, but you think you might be in a master trust arrangement, it's worth checking out whether that scheme is on the relief at source or net pay arrangement basis. Remember, if you're an employee, you're at least 22 years old, but younger than the state pension age, and you earn at least £10,000 a year, you have a right to a workplace pension from your employer that they contribute into. If you've only just started your role, they are allowed to defer auto enrolment for three months. But after that, they need to enroll you. So if that doesn't happen, take it up with them. When you are enrolled into Nest, you have the ability to choose your investment strategy. If you do nothing, you'll automatically be invested into the default strategy, which is the Nest 2040 Retirement Fund. You can choose otherwise if you want, but there isn't a wide choice. 
Now that isn't necessarily a bad thing if the options are good. So are they? Well, I don't think there can be any complaints. This chart shows that the annualized performance of the default fund since launch after the deduction of annual management charges has been 9.4% a year. Now this is a fund that is 60% allocated to global equities, global shares, with the remainder invested into other assets. If we compare that to the Vanguard Life Strategy 60% equity fund, which has the same allocation to global equities, it's outperformed it by nearly 20%. Now it's important to consider risk as well, because if one fund takes more risk than the other to achieve its return, it's not really a fair comparison. But this chart shows that both funds have experienced a very similar level of volatility. Now, I was personally shocked by this because I'd heard some people say that the Nest funds hadn't performed well and that people were getting a bad deal. But that is definitely not the case. You can only choose between six investment funds, but they've all performed about in line with expectations for their risk profiles, with the standout performer being the Nest Shariah Fund, which has produced a 15% annualized return since launch. So that means 15% per year on average. That fund is 100% invested in equities and is higher risk, but compared to the Vanguard Life Strategy 100% equity fund, it's outstripped it by over 100% over the past decade. Now it must be said that fund will have benefited from the growth rally in tech companies over the past few years. And over 26% is invested between Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Facebook, which feels like a big risk based on their current valuations. But it's good to be aware. One final point on the 2040 retirement fund, it is a lifestyling fund that will progressively switch you out of equities and into lower risk assets like bonds the closer you get to that retirement date. I don't really like that type of strategy for all of the reasons explained in the video on screen now. I've put that video in the description below too if you want to check it out after this one. But while it's in the main accumulation phase, it has been doing a good job. One of the criticisms of Nest has been about its lack of retirement income options when you do reach that time. Well, it's not so much of a lack as a complete void in that there are no income options. Now, this is actually something that Nest is legally prohibited from doing. They cannot currently provide post-retirement financial products, although there is political pressure to change that. What it means for you is that you have no choice but to transfer your Nest pension to a different type of arrangement when you want to access benefits. It's usually a good idea to get advice at that time anyway, but if yours is a very small pot, that may be hard to come by. Now this is an area where group personal pensions definitely have an advantage because they do tend to provide a wider array of income withdrawal options than other master trust arrangements, which may only allow you to buy an annuity. Annuities are secure income plans, but they aren't very popular these days because they're not very flexible and the income rates are poor. Once again, if you'd like a seamless transition from accumulation into decumulation, then it may be worth considering opening and contributing to a different pension arrangement alongside Nest. That would provide a ready place for your Nest pension to be transferred into rather than having to search around at the time of retirement. In terms of general user experience, I think the Nest site is good. It's easy to navigate and it uses clear and straightforward language, which I like. They have attracted some criticism for their customer service though and their rating on Trustpilot gives them an average score of 3.7. It must be said though that a lot of the one-star reviews are from people moaning that they can't get a refund of their contributions until they're 55. That's not really Nest's fault, that's just pension legislation. I hate to tell those people that that age is actually increasing to 57 in 2028, so they'll probably have to wait a little bit longer. Awkward! <laughs> Like I said at the start though, I'd really like you to share your thoughts of the Nest site. Have you found it good? Have you had any dealings with their customer service? Leave me a comment below. Remember to hit that like button if this has been useful and I'll see you next time.